Hello, it is early June and for the first time this year I'm heading out to a campervan event, a campervan festival. It does seem rather late in the year but we've had such rubbish weather. Practically the whole of April was just continuous rain and I don't rem remember May being much better. Uh, but the forecast for this weekend is lovely, should be all sunny and beautiful and at the very least dry. So I'm going to head up to Shrewsbury and there should be hundreds of other vans there. And indeed there were. This turned out to be a far bigger event than I was expecting. But the best way to get a feel for it, of course, is to see the fields of vans from the air. And remember, this is before everyone had finished turning up, and there were more vans behind where the drone's pointing as well. Oh look, there's mine on the left, then Josie Mays, then Ads, then the roaming Radfords. That's the van of Mr Ads Ventures. It's his brand new van, which we'll go and have a look in in a bit. Oh, I mean, it oh, just, of course it's you, isn't it? Has to be you. Opening of an envelope, you'll turn up to. Hey, it's the Roaming Radfords. Hey, you buddy. The Ads fans are keen to admire his new van. The Pigeon. In all its grey glory. Well, this is me, parked up for the night. I will have a proper look round the show tomorrow, of course. Got the whole weekend to do that. For the moment, I am pondering whether to actually cook some supper here in the van. Got plenty of food with me. Or whether to just cop out and go and buy something from the many, many food trucks. And sheer laziness at the moment is pointing me towards the food trucks. After a very leisurely walk around the show, I've discovered something that trumps my intrinsic laziness. And that is my intrinsic meanness. I'm simply too mean to pay eight or nine pounds for a festival beef burger. And so I am going to cook in the van. The meal of choice is chicken in white sauce from a tin with some rice. The battery state at start of this uh, culinary expedition is 99%. And that is my setup. The far pan has the rice in it. And the other one will have the chicken in it. It's very sophisticated. It's all coming along pretty well. Normally one would rinse rice, but I don't have a strainer, so I don't think I can. So I'll just have to eat it as is and hope that nothing terrible happens. It might look like a pile of sick but it tastes nice. State of charge update after cooking the rice and heating the chicken and then warming a little water for washing up. The battery is now at 93%. So 7% used for one meal. I think we can safely say the battery should see me through several days and it's due to be sunny again tomorrow. So I think the solar will just put that straight back in by the time I've woken up pretty much. Good morning. The skies were grey when I got up at seven to have a shower. But now, blue skies, solar power and warmth. It's now just gone nine o'clock. Yes, I think it's going to be another nice day. My plan for breakfast is a cup of tea, a glass of orange juice, and I'm going to try poached eggs on potato cakes. I've no idea what a potato cake is. Well, obviously it's these, but I've never tried one. But I'm going to do a couple of poached eggs and pop them on that. It says to toast or grill the potato cakes, but now I've got the induction cooktop. The normal little toaster thing that you put over the gas won't work. So I'm going to heat up a pan and just put the potato cakes in there and hope the heat of the pan will effectively toast them. Hark at me, I've got the kettle on and both burners but I have reduced the burners in power so that it's just falling within 2,000 watts and the inverter can cope. And that's the current state of charge and current draw. I notice the solar power is coming in. We've got about 100 watts coming in already. So by the end of the day, I think that will all be replenished. Breakfast is definitely served. There's quality cuisine for you. It turns out that potato cakes don't really taste of anything, but I am now fortified and the plan for the day is just to wander around the show and film some vans. Fancy a van? For sale. 
and a whole load of similar vans all lined up along here. Another one for sale. Everyone seems to be getting rid of their vans. Are you bringing me Teddy? Oh, shall I throw Teddy? Shall I throw Teddy for you again? Shall I? Do you want? To... Oh. This is a camper from Surprise View Campers. And I rather like that induction hob there. Not your standard camper layout. Something different, I like that. There really is a bit of everything here. You've got truck campers. You've got little micro caravan things. Vans, motorhomes, everything. Now apparently this is a 1970s foldable, but you'll notice quite clearly the wheels are not 1970s vintage. Uh, but the people who put this together rebuilt it and are going to start remanufacturing them in that sort of style, but with the modern twist. And these are the people, the Open Road Adventure Company. There we go, have a scan of that if you're interested. This apparently is their main business to date. It's these pods you put in the uh, pickups and it becomes a camper with this pull-out kitchen unit and so on. All very rugged and off-road, isn't it? Well, 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 look who it is. It's Bluefix Energy, who checked over my van electricals. Let's go and say hello. Wave for the camera. <laughs> hey! Now this is very nice. This is what you call cosy. Let's get up and have a look. Look at that. Isn't that a nice kitchen unit? And then on the other side, kettles on. Can't go wrong with kettle on. And bed at the back. And if you're wondering who made it, Boland Camper Conversions. With the inevitable QR code and a lovely guard dog. Hello, lovely guard dog. New ID Buzz, first time I've seen that in the flesh. It's all very space age, isn't it? I'm not sure I like this trend. It's kind of back to the 70s, the modern electric car. I'm sure it's lovely to drive, though. It's got that new car smell. This must be the other YouTubers section. Vans all logoed up. Hello, fellow YouTubers. I discovered I forgot to bring any clean T-shirts with me. So I'll probably have to come back here later. There's a section over there called Field of Dreams, which is lots of unusual camper vans. Not that the rest of them aren't unusual. We'll go and have a look around that in a bit. Next to it, the fun fair, which is very quiet at the moment. A standard VW, you think. And then you look at what they're towing. I'm being told this van is for sale and I'm being heavily persuaded I ought to buy it. <laughs> and this is amazing, isn't it? Look at that. Isn't that just the cutest thing? A space for a bed inside. A little bit of storage at the end. This is a rather nicely done out van built by the lady who's sitting on top, who is a nurse apparently and lives in it full time. Let me give you the tour. So you've got the uh, kitchen there with a double gas hob and an extendable bit of worktop. More worktop there. And then on that side, you've got cupboards huge sink, air fryer, and lots and lots of rather nice storage above. It is, um, it is nice. Now over here, you've actually got a bathroom. It's at a slight angle, so it doesn't feel like it intrudes like some of them do, and that's quite clever. 
It's obviously small, but well. clearly works. And then at the back, you've got a double seating arrangement with a table that goes between them for dining or general sitting. And then bed across the back. With a little telly. Your entertainment on a movable bracket. Lots of nice ventilation and light from the skylight. Coffee machine. Plants. And again, lots of storage under in these jars with the lid bolted to the shelf, so you just screw the jar on. Apparently that's to save weight, so there was no need to put a cupboard up. And there's a fridge down there. This is very nice. It's very rustic, isn't it? Very nice. This is an ex-police van, as you might gather from all the metalwork. That's cute. Time to visit the Field of Dreams. Now that bus I have shown before, so I won't do that one again. A long time ago I used to own a smart car and did wonder whether one could ever turn it into a camper van. But proof, if proof were needed, not just one bed, but two. Five feet five long, apparently. Kitchen at the back. The smaller the camper, the more I like it. Why well, I like the smart car, but look at this. Probably a Piaggio Porter or one of its variants with bed and kitchen and storage. Isn't that neat? And it's tiny, 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 tiny. Look at that. Fabulous. That's quite novel. It must have headroom below, but then it's got a pop top on it as well. That is one sleek motorhome. Love the shape of the door. Question, what do you do when you have one of these and you want to go motorhoming with it? Well, obviously, you build it a garage at the back of your giant motorhome. The car gives you a clue as to what we find in this section. It is vintage camper vans and vintage horns. Now, what was I just saying about how I like small camper vans and things? That is tiny. Another teeny tiny one, it says, feel free to look inside, so we will. There are fields and fields and fields here of people camping in their vans, various. I can't possibly show them all, but look at those. It's all a bit space age and retro at the same time. And this is the main stage, which has been pumping out music all day, and very popular too. It is Sunday morning. I didn't cook last night, just had some cold pasta and tuna and ended up uh, in conversation with the people in the camper van behind me and then a relatively early night, although an early night for me. Everyone else seemed to be having a riotous party, uh, but I was tired and cold, so I went to bed. Now, today, uh, it's looking like another nice sunny day. No specific plans for today because I've pretty much been around all the show I want to see. So I think I'll just hang out, read a book and chill for today. It is surely only right that I give a quick shout out to some of my fellow van YouTubers parked around me, so let's go and see them. Who are you and where can we find you on, on the internet? Right, we are Shaz and... I'm Daz. And, and together we're Shaz, Shaz and Daz. Daz. <laughs> we're on, that. you can find us on Instagram and it's Shaz.Daz. And we're full-time van life in. In our medium wheelbase crafter, we built ourselves. Do you want to tell us who you are? Hey, do you? Who are you? Oh, you lovely. That's what you are. Lovely. 
Uh, I'm Dave, uh, married to Jeanette. We travel around the country. You can find us on 10,000 Sunsets, uh, which is a very small channel with a very select uh, audience. Uh, and we go around the country with our friends, Joe and Frank, Frank and Sense, and uh, we're just enjoying van life at the moment, enjoying ourselves going around seeing all the beautiful things in Britain. Well, I am Geeky Philip, and you can find me, well, just search for Geeky Philip on, uh, on Google and you'll find me everywhere. And I also run wildcamping.co.uk and motorhomer.com if you want to come along to a rally. And that's about it, really. And this is the Geeky Philip Mobile. That is an awesome Tonka toy of a beast. It is now late afternoon slash early evening and the festival is gently coming to an end. I've bid goodbye to my fellow camping friends over there somewhere behind me and now I shall head off. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.